Um, but does it make a difference? It's a scope tower. Uh, a lot of places, if they do scopes only, you're actually just going to be in a big, we call it the boom. The boom is like one of these things that's bigger. It's going to have two TVs. Why do they do that? So sometimes this is the patient, doctor's there, I'm here, he's going to screen here, and I'm going to screen there. I can't do this while I'm trying to scope, right? So it's the same picture, which is two screens, right? But it's a single, single screen scope tower. A lot of things are on here. This has got a camera and a light source all in one. A lot of times it's two separate things. Does it make a difference, really? This is a um, pump. What the pump does, again, for, it do a scope in any joint. You need fluid. You need fluid to, to, to expand the joint. You want the joint to be as big as it can be. That being said, this pumps fluid. So it allows you to say, I want 40, I want 50 pounds, or I don't know, said low ground pressure, where it might be. But anyways, you, you can regulate how much you want. Problem with that is maybe too high, even though you have a capsule there, you are going to leak some fluid out into the sub the sub q tissue. If you see a shoulder when it's all done, but you have a big scope, the shoulders are humongous, like holes on one side. It is full of fluid. It's not all be normal zilly. Normal zilly would then make it your normal body anyways. Eventually you get rid of it, but it's humongous for a while. It leaks a lot of water. Um, so that's a, that's a, this is a uh, pump. Uh, down below that is a shaver. So remember talking about that shaving, I didn't see a shaver today, but that's what this is for. You got the shaver in here, it allows you to set different, different RPMs, that kind of thing. And the very bottom is called a vapor. A vapor is a, a, a it be a thermal or it can be, um, one is ultrasonic, uh, ultrasound type, and this is a vapor. Uh, but basically it's cautery. It allows you also to kind of, kind of um, vaporize tissue as well, not just cautery. And the bottom is the pedals that you utilize everything. So they have on the, the floor. If I push the button, they get where they want to do. Scope and or vapor. All we're using today is the first machine, which is the light and the camera. Eric, how small of a person can you do a scope on? Well, they have different size scopes. So they have many scopes. would be for a wrist or an elbow or an ankle. They're much smaller than this one. Um, but, I mean, I mean, you, you, the smaller joint, as you can see. Right, so like they typically done some scopes on children. Not generally, no, not for peace. I haven't seen it. I'm sure there's probably some peace sponges that do. Some of the other does, but typically I've not seen it too often. Yeah, I'm just curious. But yeah, it could happen, I'm sure. So this is two parts. This is sterile. We're not doing a sterile procedure today, so I'm going to do it sterilely. Um, this case here provides us with our actual scope. Like I said, we have a 70 degree scope, a 30 degree scope, whatever. Typically it's going to be a 70 degree scope. So that angle is about 70 degrees, 70 degree scope. So the picture you're seeing is going at an angle like this. Is not straight on, is at an angle. You want to wait inside here, you'll see what that, what that means to you. So it allows you to look down, look up, look to the side, without even moving your scope around. That's why you do that, okay? So you can see around the corner. Believe it or not, too. So it's called a scope. So 70 degree scope. You have 70, 30, and 0. Most commonly you're going to use a 70 or a 30. We're going to start with a 70 most commonly. Not always, but most commonly. Good. We'll about 500 bucks. So back in the. We'll about 500 bucks scope, yes. When Dr. Burr is it, not to be, not to be more happy with this thing. Yeah. Not a good thing to do. Okay, come in, come That's what we're most commonly going to use. A 30 degree scope, 70 degree scope. It's called a scope cannula. This is what this goes inside of it. It locks. Fluid goes through the cannula, past the the, um, the scope. Why do you want that? You want to push fluid away from the camera. You don't want stuff coming to your face. You want face stuff to go away from your face. Yeah, you may have a suction come out the other side or somewhere else, but this is what pushes fluid away from the scope so you can see something. Some doctors will do outflow and inflow, but most doctors put inflow through here, push fluid away, and then have outflow somewhere else. Either up by the top of the knee or in the shoulder somewhere else. So it's a cannula. But then we have our light cord, 
and our camera cord. Obviously, we've all need stereo when we have it in the operating room. <clears throat> what else do we have in here? So if we have to, when they first start, we call it introducer. So when, you, when they first go up, it's gonna go like this. The doctor's gonna put it in the joint like this. They're gonna take their like a small incision, they're gonna jam this to the soft tissue. With the sub-Q into the capsule. And it goes in the joint. And they're gonna pop this part, there's a little black button here, they're gonna pop that out. I'm going to put their scope in, like so. Okay. Obviously, there's a correct side that stays on the field and part of off the field. That's the part that goes off of that, plugs into the actual camera or the uh, system there. When it comes to prepping all of this stuff out, is this like a surgical prep thing? The scrub test usually has those done. Okay. Every once in a while, you might be the only one there. And then one kind of going over it. Every once in a while, you're the person that, for whatever reason, I've been in the middle of the night, and everybody in the room does something else. They don't do ortho very often. You might be the most experienced person in the room doing ortho. So I'll plug this in first. This is up, even, believe it or not. That idiot proof. Okay, so I have a camera now, but I need light. I need, I need something bright, bright. I can flash, right? But flash all the time. I can't just have a flash every once in a while. I've been all the time. So it gets very, very hot. Um, so you have that cold fluid going over it. It keeps the body cold. But you have to be careful. You have the light cord in here. You cannot leave it on the patient's body or the main stand. It will burn a hole. I've seen it. It'll burn a hole right through. It gets that hot. Okay. So we'll be using it to get kind of warm. But we have a very big area here, so it won't be too hot. It won't burn anything. So you have to be careful when you're putting it down. <coughs> it's going to be out for a long time. Let's put, 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 put the light on standby, please. Let's turn the light down. And then turn it back if we need it. Again, same idea. There's going to be one part that's going to stay with the patient. The patient part that goes away from the patient or towards the machine. So obviously the patient part that goes here. Hello. Bye. So that's actually a white balance. But that is for us to get basically an idea of when we're uh, around something white. That's close enough where we have white here. We have a camera now. We have lights, we have a camera, camera ready to go. So, good. What it allows us to do now is we're ready to go ahead and go with our scope. Okay, I'll give me put fluid through here, have a pump. Sometimes I'll just do gravity flow where basically it's just a tube and the, the, the fluid uh, IV pole. Most people use a pump because you can control the amount of fluid you're getting, but not always. They're in, introduced into the patient, okay? So this is not a patient, I mean, this is a box that I made. It basically allows you to kind of get the same idea. So, light up. So the machine is trying to get light higher.
That was what we needed. Okay, so now we're going to white balance. Okay. Now we actually can go inside. So here, we have edge of light. So hopefully in your body you don't have styrofoam. <laughs> hopefully. So I know what's inside here, so I know what's kind of up, what's down, okay? So that being said, like I told you, this is telling you, this little arrow here, sorry, it's telling you where the angle of the scope is. Hmm. Okay? That makes sense to you. So the, the scope is sitting up, kind of where I'm at here. So I know what's in here, so I know what I'm looking for, I know I can find things. <laughs> okay? <laughs> There's an apple in here. I knee here. Allow me kind of, I can, by turning the scope, I can see different angles. What I'm looking for here. So I look up. I look down. I change the scope by moving where the scope angle is, where the face of the scope is, okay? As I said, it might be getting a little bit confusing or it might get a little bit, we get a little bit uh, sick or whatever call it here. Well, you just take Statue of Liberty, <laughs> right? Well, you can kind of drive over. Sometimes you get, so we have to leave that. Maybe you might get to the hub of the scope, you can't go any further. Maybe you make another hole. Uh, this is a lot bigger than the case is going to be. The only things around you is so I think above us too. You can't see it right there. There's something above us as well, or to the next to the side of us. So it's right here. I knocked it down already. <coughs> and then what we want to do is we see doctors that might do a question on the shoulder, they might go to a different hole, a different portal to get a different look. So they can't get to the whole part they want to get to where they're at. So that same view, we came out of that hole earlier, over there, and we can focus a little bit here. That's what we were looking at before. We're looking at that floor on the other side. I have dice in here. I have an Empire State Building, a trolley car, a taxi, New York theme kind of at the bottom here. So I'm asking you guys to do when I come in. I'm asking you to find something. I'm going to say find the dice. Find the dice. And I say if we go to the dice, when you go, we go to two. How can you see the four or what's on top? You know, how can you find something like that? So if I'm staying in the same area, but I'm seeing a different whole different angle, right? Right up there a little bit. How can I see different things? Go in front here. I'm changing the scope here, I can see something different. And go over here. Well, look, over that, look around that corner sometimes. Sorry. <coughs> Come in here, how do I see around the corner? So if you come to the angle, come to the side of it, and you get a different angle by pull, pushing this this way or that way. I can see what's behind me over here. So I'm asking you to do. So I'm asking you to come in there, I put you in one of the four holes, and I'm asking you to find certain things. You might say find the dice, find the Statue of Liberty, you gotta find different angles, okay? So it's very, what I tell you about scope is a very slow motion, it's not very fast. You go really fast, it's going to be really crazy. If you get there and you start doing this, it's going to be really weird. You're going to get kind of dizzy, okay? We're going to get dizzy around you, too. It's going to be a very slow motion. You're trying to find where you're at. Figure what's up, what's down. So let me know that's down. So what, what am I looking for? Okay, I want you to go over to the front of the taxi. I want you to find the back of the taxi. That kind of stuff. Dice. Find the five. Find the three. You know, that kind of stuff. That's what I'm going to ask you to do. And then what we'll do on Monday is we're going to work together. So some of them have the scope, and then have other instruments where you can grab things and move things. And I think that, so I'm going to have you look at the dice, and they're going to grab the dice and make it the one up top or the two up top. Oh, cool. And then we can work together. That's what you're doing in the operating room. So when the doctor's working, maybe you're trying to put a needle in here. I have to hold it very steady while you're doing that. And I'm going to pan out so you can see more. Or I'm going to follow the needle where they're going or they're trying to figure out. Just learning that. And then again, what I'm doing, I use it like this. If they have it where they want it, I'm going to be upside down, look at this way. I'm going to do this go. It's opposite, right? So it makes a little difference. Not a big deal. Everything should be very slow. I mean, they need to remember. Okay? You want to go first, second, third? 
From there. Done, babe. Okay. This is a hands on. The lights are still there, too. We only do lights down when we need to do scopes. Sure, that looks good. Make sure all lights are coming out. Okay, so first find up, find find top, bottom. We either got top or bottom. Top. Okay, to make it level or make it look like it's straight. You know, like like your side of your side of your head. There we go. Oh. And you're level, right? Yeah. You can also do that by taking this hand here. Pull over this. No, twist that around. No, this way, turn it around. No. There you go. Uh, wow. Okay. okay. So as you see different things, right? You look at straight ahead, but actually on top. Yeah. Sitting there, and I'll put it around the other way. You see that, right? Yeah. So that's helpful to know what you're, what you're looking at. I always know that that's telling you where your scope angle is pointing towards. Okay. So now I want you to find the tacky pad. On the back of the taxi cab. Okay. Find the um, <coughs> go into a different portal. Go over here. This portal over here. I want you to find um, the the meniscus. Hello. This is perfect. The find the, the bottom of the patella. The other side of the patella, I should say. Go, go right to it. Go all the way to it. Sorry. <laughs> all right. Um, find the red dice. So brain down trick. Is up, down, up, yeah. down is up, up is down, left is right, right is left. Is that it? I think that's right, that's right, that's right, that's right. Close, you're driving in. I suggest that leave one stable and find the other one. Don't move both at the same time. That's close enough. Pretty close. So, pretty hard to find it. Yeah. Okay. So when Senna, I'm over here doing this, driving. You don't know where I'm going to go to get the tread ball. We're going to do it on Monday. And you're going to grab things, put things up, and put things up. So the main idea is to be able to find something, follow it, and then be able to touch to it to yourself. Because that's going to be important to be able to kind of be able to figure out what you're doing. And slow motion is more important. So that's not too bad, right? You want to do another hole, just go there and shift so you can see. So that's supposed to kind of represent somewhat what you would look like. So when you come in, you're going to see a meniscus. I was going to have a total uh, whole knee here, but you have a meniscus and then you kind of come over top. And so when the top is too low, that's the view they're going to see. They're going to see that. It, so when they want to, they want to get a view like that. You look at the meniscus, then it's right away, right there. They're going to take a shaver there on the other side of the kneecap. And they're going to. <coughs> And they're going to work with a shaver if you're doing this here. And they're going to use a shaver on the other hand. They're going to move with one hand and use the shaver. They're going to try to trim things or cut things. That's how they do it. That's how I represent the knee the best I can get in a fake form, in a box. Okay? That's the idea. That's the idea. Cool. That's the idea. Okay. What's next? <laughs> 